Mr. Vice President, there's been an explosion at the White House. An explosion? The events unfolding at the White House are nothing short of unbelievable. We received the surveillance footage of Commander Lowe attacking and killing one of the President's Secret Service agents. He's all over the TV, shooting my agent. We don't know if that footage is real. If you think you're going to get away with this, you're out of your mind. This isn't a parking lot hole. It's the White There's House. There's a bad guy, Mr. President. Christopher Lowe. Holt, I'd like to bring this situation to a peaceful conclusion as quickly as possible. OK, what is it, Gavin, that you can give me that I don't already have? Put her through. Alex, what's going on? Is this it, Gavin? This is the, this is the big plan? You put my mother through on the phone to talk me off the ledge, is that it? Gavin Lawson is jerking me around. I don't think he's taking me seriously. Now, to demonstrate my resolve normally, I would shoot someone in the face. What do you think, Andy? Hmm? I think he takes you very seriously. Oh, what the hell would you know? You are about to make a serious misstep here, Holt. So if you want to shoot somebody, you shoot me. You want me to shoot you? No, Mr. President. You want me to shoot the president? No, Mr. You want shoot me to me. shoot the first lady? No. Then open your mouth. Get the gun off him. I am not joking around here. Whatever it is you want, you are not going to get it if you pull that trigger. And you will never, ever talk to your mother again. You won't see her. You won't talk to her. You're a godfather? Your godfather to Gavin Lawson's yes, children. I am. What are their names? Clarice and Kelly. How old are they? How old are they? Seven and fourteen. Read a newspaper. We welcome you to our special coverage on the devastating attacks in the nation's capital today that have crippled the city and have further rocked the besieged Reynolds administration. What started out as two seemingly unconnected incidents, a Washington Metro train derailment and the Eisenhower building being evacuated due to a fire, then quickly escalated into an unprecedented and highly coordinated assault carried out with ruthless military precision. Moments ago, Vice President Lawson gave this public statement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm addressing you tonight in response to an attack on the White House by terrorists. This is an unprecedented and cowardly act by a minority group of people. Let me assure you that a continuity of government protocol, which exists for this scenario, has been executed flawlessly by our military and a working government is in place. Rest assured, the capital is safe, as is the rest of the country. And while the siege of our nation's most famous building takes place, I have implemented a curfew in effect in the Washington, D.C. area. And in conjunction with the FAA, have also grounded all air traffic on the eastern seaboard, purely as a precautionary measure. I know many of you have questions relating to the status of the president, but as I'm sure you can uh, appreciate, national security prevents me from disclosing more information at this time. We will not and never have negotiated with terrorists. The first family should be in our thoughts and prayers. I know they're in mine. God bless you all and God bless America. And roughly eight it's him, isn't it? Yes, but we don't know. You know everything you need to know. You have to do something. Alice, we are doing absolutely everything possible. I promise you. There's literally nothing more important in my life than getting your father out of that building safely. What about my mom? Well, this state of national security caused delays in logistics. Now, listen, the good news is I spoke to your dad just now on the phone. They're alive, and they need you to stay positive, OK? 
Lawson. Vice President, I wanted to speak to you away from the eyes and ears of the others. Go ahead. Sir, right now we have a tactical advantage that we know exactly which room of the White House they are in. The Oval Office. That means we know where to focus a rescue team, and they should be able to penetrate with relative ease. If they move from that room, then we lose the ability for a precision raid. And worse, they could head for the President's bunker, which is impenetrable from the outside. I understand what you're saying, but there's no way I can authorize a rescue operation when not one, but two of our prime targets have guns to their heads. Either one of them would be dead in seconds. But sir, ordering a rescue operation as soon as possible is statistically always the most successful course of action. I don't care about statistics, Director. I care about the lives of the people in that room. Look, I get your point. Have your men on immediate standby, but I want to see where the negotiations get us first. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, if you have any further operational suggestions, please make them in front of the others. Sir. All right, let's get the cap on the horn. Confirm they're on station. Weapons hold. Yes, sir. All right, people. I think we've let this guy stew long enough. Yeah, let's get this party to... back on track. Get me London, please. We're best in, sir. All right, Agent Barrett. We're here, sir. Right, let's have the White House too, please. Connecting now, sir. <laughs> I'm all right. I figured it out, actually. Lawson doesn't like you, <laughs> right? Think, think about it. He's the vice president. He knows if he pushes me just enough, I'm going to shoot you in the face. And if that happens, he becomes president. Boom. He's a great president because he's the president that single-handedly tried to save your life. This is all good for Gavin Wilson. Ah, speak of the devil. Gavin, we were just talking about you. Have you considered my offer, Holt? I have. I have, oh, I have. And let me start by saying, Gavin, you have some balls. You know, I've got two of the most important people in the country at gunpoint, and you're trying to negotiate with me. I, I actually admire you for that. Thank you. What about the offer? Well, you know a bit of due diligence. Um, <clears throat> is my mother still on the line? She is. Well, put her on. It's me, Alex. Now, how do I know this is my mother? How do I know this isn't some voice actor or computer trickery from my old friends at MI5, huh? I promise. Ask me something about myself. All right. Um... All right. The last time I saw you, I bought you something. What was that? You brought me a caramel latte with whipped cream. I didn't finish it. Was that because of the cancer? Yes, love. I'm afraid it saps your appetite, as well as your energy. Why didn't you just tell me? I think we were both keeping secrets that day, don't you? Job abroad. Best way to protect you is for you to know nothing. Ditto. I didn't want your last memory of me to be in a hospital bed. And the last thing I'm going to remember about you is... <laughs> I walked down the river, remember? Remember I was trying to get you to use something? <laughs> Gavin. Of course, the offer. Do tell, Gavin. Holt, I give you my word as Vice President of the United States that if you release the President and First Lady unharmed... ...and stand down all your men, we'll delay any kind of trial for your action and prioritize getting you to your mother's bedside. We got jets on standby. We can get you across the Atlantic in two hours. You'll be allowed, under armed guard, of course. Be with your mother in her final days through her passing and you'll be able to attend any kind of service that she has then and only then will you be returned to the united states to stand trial you must think i'm an idiot gavin 
I'm not gonna fall for this bluff. It's not a bluff. I'll vouch for him. And now he's already been straight with you, right? He told you that you will be in custody at the end of this, but at least you'll be able to spend time with your mom in her last few hours. We always want longer with those we love. I just know that you two aren't trying to tell me to cherish time with family. Not after what you've done with mine. Not after what you have both done, all three of you have done to hundreds, no, thousands. I understand loss. No. No, you don't. Not yet, but you will. You have one last chance to see your mom. Not everyone gets to have that. I wish I had a chance to see my mom before she passed away. To say goodbye. Who is that who spoke, please? The, the lady? This is Rita Reynolds, Mrs. Holt. Hello, Mrs. Reynolds. Did I just hear you say you'd lost your mother? I did. Yes. Sadly, also to cancer. She didn't know she had it until it killed her. We never got a chance to say goodbye. Oh, dear. How heartbreaking. I'm sorry to hear that. I, too, am a mother, Mrs. Holt. I recently nearly lost my daughter, so I appreciate the need to see your child one more time. How did you nearly lose your daughter, Mrs. Reynolds? Uh, Mrs. Holt, Rita's daughter Alice was recently kidnapped and held hostage. Her life held to ransom. It was only through the actions of a Navy SEALs unit that we were able to recover her alive, although many other people died. I'm surprised you didn't hear about it. Mr. Lawson. I've been lying in my room, waiting to die for several weeks. News and current affairs haven't been on the top of my agenda. Who, may I ask, kidnapped this young lady? It was your son, Alex Holt. Is this true, Alex? Yes, it is. Why? For Ross? You know it's for Ross. Who is Ross? He is my brother. Don't say his name! Sir, we have that information here. According to reports, Ross Holt was serving in a unit in Afghanistan that was mistakenly targeted by a U.S. military drone. We thought there were locals. They launched a strike on the unit. Killing everyone. Sir, we thought they were a Taliban patrol that was advancing on one of our bases. The information about a friendly unit operating in that area didn't get through to us in time. Yes, it did. All the information got through in time. You know why? Because I was there and I saw it. I like everybody else on this phone call, but everybody in this room, I was there. You know what didn't get through? was on the U.S. military side. And later, when they gave us the report on to what happened, where the cock-up was, it was just pages and pages of redacted information. Black ink all over. And you know the only reason to do things like that is because somebody screwed up really badly and you are covering your asses because you are lying. In war, sometimes mistakes are made. Don't tell me about war and mistakes. This isn't some poor private on a battlefield. No, this is a clerical error. You wouldn't even have the guts to stand up and say what it is. So why attack the president? Because he's the commander in chief. Because I don't have a name of the general that was on site because they won't give it to me. So the buck stops with him right here. And you and your guys with your inquiries and your reports, they revealed nothing, no answers. How can we grieve? We can't. So I'm going to come here because you think I'll shut up and say nothing. Well, I'm here in the West Wing and I'm not going anywhere. Hold. Hold. Okay. I'm sorry about your brother. I am deeply sorry that we are responsible for his death. I am. But you're right. You're right. I am the commander in chief. You have to let my wife and you have to let Mr. Whitmore go. I, I am the one who needs to be held accountable here. Yes, you are. But I don't want your apology. Until you've been where I've been. Wait, wait, wait. No, hang on a second. Stop. I'm the one in charge. I'm responsible. I, I give the orders. You point that gun at Please. me. Please. My daughter oh, needs her mommy. Hold. Hold. 
Listen, you have an opportunity here. You're right. It's my fault. You walk out of there it's right now and spend time charge. with your mother before she dies. If you kill the first lady, the only way you're leaving that house is in a body bag. Mrs. Holtz, you understand? My girl needs her mommy, please. Let me stop you there, Mrs. Reynolds. I may be more pragmatic than my tempestuous son, but you don't know what it's like to lose a child. Mrs. Holt, I'm a mother, please. My daughter needs me. No, I appreciate that your daughter was in danger, and I empathize with the feeling. Please, Mrs. Holt, she's suffered so much already. I can't do that to her, please. Do you love your daughter? Of course I do more than anything else in the world. And does she love you? And how about your husband? Same. And they'd be heartbroken if anything happened to you, especially Alice. Yes, yes. Is my son still pointing a gun at you? Yes. He is. Alex? Yes, my love. Tell me again why you're doing this. For Ross. This is all for Ross. Then do it now. Do it for your brother. No! <laughs> President, are you still there? Goodbye, Gavin. See, Andy, I told you it'd hollow him out. Bold move by Gavin. Gotta give him credit for that. It backfired spectacularly. Shooter, you son of a bitch. And you didn't need to sanction drone strikes on your allies, but you did. You know why, Mr. President? Because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Just like this. There is nowhere you can hide. I will use everything at my disposal as president of the United States to hunt you down and make you suffer. And I will enjoy every second that agent in London. I am going to get him to suffocate your mother. See, Paul, we're not so different, you and I. Now you're qualified to hate me. I don't take offense at it, Paul. I wanted it. I expect it from you now. And now I believe you. Now you hate me. And the only way to get you into my headspace was to lose someone close to you and have you stand by watching helplessly as I execute her. And let me tell you something, Mr. President. It stings. It's going to eat away at you. And then eventually it will be the only thing you can think of. Retribution. We're not so different, you and I. You're a dead man, old. Sir, this situation has come to a head. We have to get men in there now. And risk the president's life? You heard what happens when this guy's provoked. Now, he has got no compunction for killing. And now he's holding the one person we can't risk. Sir, capitulating to any demands would severely weaken us in the eyes of other nations. We'd look weak. Now, an airstrike on the White House will demonstrate a, a resolve that'll deter even the North Koreans from ever doing anything like this again. Are you out of your mind? I am not leveling the White House. The British tore it down in 1812, and I am not letting them do that again now. Now, come on, people. Let's get on top of this thing. So what are your orders, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distressing duty to inform you that First Lady Rita Reynolds has been killed as a direct result of a terrorist action. I am sure you can appreciate at this time that I am unable to provide more information. But suffice to say, the man responsible will be held accountable and brought to swift justice. Sir, the Oval Office has come online. Mr. President, are you all right? Hi, I'm the guy with the guns at Batman's head. How about you address me? What do you want, Holt? 
thank you. I would like $750.4 million into my bank account in the next 60 minutes, Gavin. Don't do it. Shut up. Ooh. Mr. President, address me. Or have you forgotten what I did to the First Lady? access that kind of money within 60 minutes. Huh? I'm a little worried that you politicians believe half the rubbish that comes out of your mouth. Gavin, we both know it will take a few keystrokes and a few minutes to get me that money. So just do it. Why such a specific amount of money, Holt? Gavin, I'm glad you asked. It's the federal government's annual advertising budget figure. Pretty clever, right? I think the country could use a little less image management and a little less PR and actually just a bit of governance. What's Christopher Lowe's role in all this? Is he working with you? Ah, that's for me to know and for you to find out. But let's just say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. He was discharged this morning, wasn't he? Sorry, we could talk all day, Gavin, but you only got 58 and a half minutes left. By the way, if this money isn't in my account in 58 minutes, several of my colleagues are going to release sarin into the subway systems of New York, Chicago, and your own Washington, DC. Gavin, I am not joking. Shut it off. Okay, well, we either take up more of his guys down here, or we go focus on the president. We should focus on the president. You're right, we should focus on the president. Sir, I understand your caution, but please tell me you're not considering doing what Holt wants. I'm considering what's in our nation's best interests. All the financial markets were suspended immediately, sir. You could legitimately say it wasn't possible to transfer the money. That would be playing games with the president's life. And what's in the dollar and stock market in freefall. Sir, the United States government does not negotiate with terrorists. All right, you know what? If one more person says that, I'm going to go ballistic. It's a whole load of crap, and we all know it. This country's proven time and again that we'll negotiate with anyone when it's in our best interests. And right now, I think it's in our country's best interest to try to free our president and to prevent the countless deaths that would occur in those cities if, if they were all exposed to chemical weapons. Money is meaningless compared to such consequences. Get Treasury to make the transfer in 30 minutes' time. Sir, 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 sir. sir. your objections are noted, gentlemen. But this is my decision. Sir, Andy Wigmore and Team One have reached the bunker. How are we looking? Good to go. Well, then, I would say it was time to rock and roll, wouldn't you? Get up. Get him up. Everybody out. Mr. President, it's time to count our money. Let's get back down to the bunker. Let's be alert, boys. Got company down here. Down, Mr. President. Knock, knock. Is that you, Chris? How'd you guess? Oh, are you getting lonely? Let me guess, missing some of your friends? Oh, Chris, I've missed you. I've actually done nothing wrong to you, Chris. 
Me and you should have no problem. But I'm here with someone you should have a problem with. The guy you're probably trying to rescue. The President of the United States. What a bad joke. You rescued his only little girl, and what did he do to you? He hung you out to dry. The most powerful man in the whole wide world couldn't step in and save your career. You're out of a job, Chris. And I'm down a few guys. Come and work for me. You can kill anybody you want, and you'll have miles more fun. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, I am having fun, Holt. <laughs> oh, really, Chris? Well, let me change the tempo a little bit. What's to stop me putting a bullet into the president's head right now? Oh, come on. That's a bargaining chip. I'm not gonna kill the president. Besides, I'm not coming after him. I'm coming after you, Holt. Well, good for you, Chris, because I can't stand the sexual tension over the radio. Why don't you come here, and I'll tell you what I really think. But you see, once all your men are dead, you'll have me all to yourself. How's that sound? You. You talk to him and you tell him he's putting the president's life at risk and yours. You tell him to stand down. You command the law? Stand your whip, one of the president's chiefs of staff. Keep up the good work, sir. Don't listen to that idiot, okay? He just cost himself a slap in the face. Chris, this is like a game of chess. You make one wrong move, and I'm gonna kill the king. And if you don't believe me, Chris, I've already sacrificed the queen. See you real soon. You three, you go and you get him. You don't come back until it's done! Go! My daughter, you murdered my wife. This isn't about your brother, this is personal. You know what, it's a bit personal. But that's because you took six million dollars of my money that I rightfully earned off you and your lax security. Forgive me if I take my money back, you worthless son of a bitch. Oh, did that annoy you? Because I took your money, you see, Paul? You and I, we're not that different, are we? You know, I beg to differ. You're nothing like him. Really? Yeah. Pande. What makes you say that? Pande. Because he's done a lot of good in this world and he's a good man and you, you're a criminal. No, he's a criminal. Because anybody in the world can buy him. If they've got deep enough pockets, they buy him and they can also buy me. And the only question you guys haven't worked out to ask yet is who of you royally pissed off enough that they would put somebody like me in front of somebody like him with a gun? My name is Bob Carson, and I paid mercenary Alexander Holt to kidnap Alice Reynolds in an attempt to destabilize President Reynolds. Sir? Helicopter's approaching. Reactivate the Camp David link. Gavin! Hey, what's up? I hear this helicopter's coming towards this building, despite what we talked about. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break my end of the bargain, too. In 30 seconds, I'm gonna shoot... Mute the line a second. What's he talking about? It's Delta Force, sir. They're about a mile from the White House. Well, get them out of there. I told you to keep them away from the White House. Yes, sir. Hey, unmute. Holt, they're withdrawing. Just give them a minute. A minute? Holt, I don't mind dying because my kids know I was a public servant and I tried to work for the greater good. But you, you are a gigantic, enormous, fucking nothing. Just bought you another minute, Gavin. What are the helicopters doing now? Withdraw the helicopters immediately. Nobody goes anywhere near the White House without my say so. Holt. The funds are being transferred to your bank account right now. How soon before we get the president back? Well, you know what? Forgive me for being a bit of a skeptic now, Gavin, but I think I'll check the bank balance first before I let him go. Cover it!
How are we looking? All set. Good. You know what to do. It's not the gun. So this has all just been about money? Yes, Paul. It just so happens to be a nice bonus that it's your government's money. And you're going to keep the treasury from recovering it this time by splitting it up and having other people withdraw it immediately, is that it? Want to look at the brains on Paulie? Huh? Not just a pretty face, Paulie. You're never going to see a penny of it. Boys, I think it's time we went for another walk. Paul, you lead the way. It's your house. CCTV system back up online. Sir, Christopher Lowe's on the line. Lowe, where are you? We're in the White House Situation Room. I've got the CCTV systems back online. Hold this crew have left the post and they're uh, assembling in the Oval Office. I think they're preparing to leave the White House, sir. Have you seen the president? Yes, sir. Hold test the president at his side and he's keeping him close by at all times. The White House staff get out, okay, sir? Yes, we just picked them up. Good. Sir, there's no one on guard duty here, so I suggest you get all available marksmen and troops into position and take these clowns out before they get away. Okay, Lowe. Keep the line open. Sir, nothing has changed. We can't trust what Lowe is saying. Well, how would he know about the escapees if he didn't help them escape? He's sitting at the CCTV desk. He could have seen them on that. Well, he clearly wasn't lying about the PA. She's sitting there right with him. She could be coerced. I'm not sending men in there on Lowe's word alone. But I do want every marksman in position, and I want every member of the armed forces ready to enter the White House if the opportunity presents itself. And if any of those marksmen get a clear shot at the terrorists, tell them to take it. Sir, these are the last of our men. There should be just enough to see this through. Gavin! There you are. Oh. Gavin, be a sweetheart and have them send Marine One to us. And when he lands, get the pilot to open the door so that we can see there's no soldiers waiting inside. Don't screw this up, please, Gavin, because I'm going to have the President of the United States with us, so we don't want anybody to accidentally get shot in the crossfire. Well, bugger me. They are actually doing it. <laughs> All right, boys, get yourselves to the helicopter. It's going to finish a few things up. We'll get the CCTV system back online here, sir, OK? Chris, quick. We're wearing a disguise so we can't spot the present. Not a bad move. Let's go, let's go, hustle! No, Chris, look. The present's being taken the other way. Let's call it in and clear it out in case they come our way. Mr. Vice President. Ever felt invisible? Okay, screw dignity. <laughs> Sir, the White House CCTV is back online. I think they want your attention. All right, unmute it. Yes, Miss Merrick. Sir, the president is not one of the men leaving the White House. He's not getting on the helicopter? No, sir. Everyone getting on that helicopter holds crew. I suggest you take them out. But how's Holt getting out of there? Yeah. Probably the same way he got in. He's got the president in the Oval Office, and he's ready to place a blow. I don't think he intends to let the president live, sir. OK, I I'm muting you again. Copy that. Sir, this sounds like a trap. If the president is headed for that helicopter, he's basically just invited you to shoot him on Holt's behalf. Mr. Vice President, we just debriefed some of the escaped hostages, and one of them has confirmed he was rescued by Christopher Lowe. You're sure? I'm sure, sir. He'd be dead without him. Lowe's on our side, for real. Thank you. Unmute it. Low, stay where you are. We're sending in help. Send in the SEALs. Take out Holt's crew. 
This is Delta Team 6. We are in a holding pattern over DC and are ready to deploy SEAL Team Alpha 1. Copy. Affirmative, Delta Team. SEAL Team Alpha are cleared to engage. Over. Never get away with this. They'll find you. Not oh, Paul. You're absolutely right. They are going to find us. I'm sorry. I got a dash. The DC Metro system's experiencing severe delays. Trying to make a bit of a getaway. <laughs> I like what you're wearing. I think it's time. This is it, Sarah. Stay close to me and don't get shot. Why are you doing this? Sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Well, my family. Yeah. It's not too late. I can get you out of this. No, no, I, I have to. I, I need me to do it. Somebody has to do it. Sorry, I'm, I really am very, very sorry. is worth it for the look on your face right now. You've got some questions. Well, let me start by saying, Christopher, did you think I would go down that quietly? Hmm? Without a fight? No, Christopher, I wouldn't. And that thing over there? That's $200,000 of plastic surgery you just killed. That's a terminally ill cancer patient who wanted a quick death and a way to make a million quid. That, Christopher, was supposed to be my escape route. I can get away if they think I'm dead. But you, Ambo, you have scuppered me not just once, but twice. Why are you trying to save him, Christopher? Because it's the right thing to do, Holt. Oh, you're a nice guy, Chris. And nice guys finish last. I'm sorry, Chris. Mr. President, are you right? All right. I'm fine. Check on Sarah. 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 Clear the room. I need some help in here! Clear. Hold us identified. Another siege involving the first family. How is this even possible? Yes, Jessica, these attacks were incredibly coordinated, meaning they were timed to coincide for maximum impact. 
The pictures we are seeing emerge are very disturbing. Uh, the cell phone videos that we've all seen show traumatized survivors escaping the carnage of the White House assault. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> I'm okay, Ali, yes. I'm okay. Sorry about your mom. If I could have saved her, I would have gladly died trying. Please just get here soon. Okay. Really soon. I love you. Love you too, Dad. Sir, I just want to say that I'm sorry about your wife. I wish I'd have, uh, I wish I could have got there sooner. I'm sure you did everything you could, Commander. You know, when I chose to serve my country, I never thought it would take so much away from me. Rita never sought out this life. She, uh... If you've got somebody special, you make sure you take care of them. Our forces can't afford to lose people like you, Commander Lowe. You want back in the Navy, your Commander-in-Chief wants you back, too. Thank you, sir. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking news story from the nation's capital. Channel 9 News can gladly confirm that the president is alive. He is in transit as I speak, and as you can see, Hello? this appears to show the president Chris? with... Oh my God, is that you? What the hell? Kelly, I'm fine, okay? Wait, no. Honey, calm down. I, I promise you, I promise you, I'm okay. Yes. I can't wait to see you, okay? I said I can't wait to see you. Hi, Mom. I'm just calling to tell you I'm okay. I have to finish asking you something. Okay, just come home safe to me. We had a situation at work today, but I'm good. You made it out alive. Well done. But Holt's dead. And that's a shame. Do you know, I really thought he was the right man for the job. But still, you did absolutely the right thing in keeping close to love. Oh, and not tipping your hat. Now Reynolds' wife is out of the way, you are best placed to get even closer to our glorious president. Oh, by the way, don't worry about Lowe. I've arranged a little payback for him. Goodbye, Sarah. We'll talk again soon. No, Kelly, I'm OK. Hey, I, I love you. You're all I care about. Just come home to me, Chris. I know, I can't wait to see you too, babe. I'll see you soon. Bye. What are you doing here?